Good morning. Today is Monday, November 7th, and this is your weekly budget brief from National Priorities Project. I'm Mattia Kramer, Senior Research Analyst. The Super Committee has been in the news a lot lately, so I thought we'd spend a couple minutes talking about the task that they have ahead of them. You might remember that back in August, the government almost shut down because lawmakers couldn't agree on raising the debt ceiling. The debt ceiling is how much debt the federal government allows itself to hold. Ultimately, lawmakers did raise the debt ceiling to prevent a government shutdown and to prevent the U.S. government from defaulting on its debt payments. But as part of the agreement to raise the debt ceiling, lawmakers formed a committee that has been nicknamed the Super Committee. The Super Committee is charged with trimming $1.2 trillion from federal deficits over the next 10 years. If the Super Committee fails to find $1.2 trillion in cuts and to put that into a proposal, or if Congress fails to vote and, um, and adopt the Super Committee proposal for $1.2 trillion in cuts, then that failure to do so will trigger automatic across the board cuts to the tune of $1.2 trillion, or the difference between however much the Super Committee proposes in cuts and the $1.2 trillion um, mandated deficit reduction goal. Uh, and therefore, the Super Committee right now is hard at work trying to figure out how to trim $1.2 trillion from projected deficits, either by raising taxes or cutting spending. In fact, their proposal is due in just a couple weeks by Thanksgiving. Here's an interesting factoid, though. The Bush tax cuts that were passed in 2001 and 2003 were originally temporary, and they were supposed to end in 2010. But President Obama and Congress extended the Bush tax cuts back in 2010 for an extra two years. So now those tax cuts are set to expire at the end of 2012. Incredibly, though, these tax cuts, which benefit all Americans, most heavily benefit the wealthiest Americans. If Congress were to extend the Bush tax cuts yet again beyond their current sunset date of 2012, another 10 years of the Bush tax cuts would cost $2 trillion just for the richest 5%. That's right, not the tax cuts for all Americans, but the Bush tax cuts for the richest 5% would cost the U.S. Treasury $2 trillion over the next decade. That's right. The Super Committee has to cut $1.2 trillion from deficits, and tax cuts for the richest 5% cost $2 trillion. That sounds like it could be an easy fix for the Super Committee. If they mandate that the Bush tax cuts for the richest 5% are not extended beyond their 2012 sunset date, then they'll save $2 trillion, far more than the amount that they currently must cut from deficits to prevent automatic cuts to government spending. Now, why aren't lawmakers jumping on this solution, you might ask? Well, some lawmakers say that ending the Bush tax cuts, even for the richest Americans, will harm the economy and will harm job creation. However, recent research by the Congressional Research Service and the Congressional Budget Office have found that the benefits from ending the Bush tax cuts for the wealthiest Americans outweigh any negatives from doing so. And polling shows, polling of all Americans, show that a majority of Americans support raising taxes on the richest Americans. And actually, a recent poll by the Wall Street Journal shows that a majority of millionaires support raising taxes on millionaires. Lawmakers haven't jumped on it, though. That's it for this week. We'll see you next week for National Priorities Project's Budget Brief.